crackle, crackle. Pop, pop. Crackle, crackle. Welcome to Earth, home of the great women and men. We are animals that have ideas. Maybe cats and ravens have ideas too, but they keep them to themselves. Travelers from the whole galaxy throng to our luscious planet with its evolution-friendly climate and nourishing minerals. Take time to locate the exit nearest you. Press one for famine, two for pestilence, three for Condoleezza, and four for death. Please note that pestilence closes at six. Okay, that was it. Okay. <laughs> Questions in your life. It can solve your problems. It may solve your wife. It may not solve your husband, but it will improve their mood. And happiness will trickle down and saturate your brood. Money's the solution when you're running out of breath. It will bring you oxygen. It may postpone your death. And if there's some left over, won't you pass it on to us? It will buy us time. Time's not travelling by bus, you know. Money is the waterbed in which your goldfish swim. Take away the money and you won't be her or him. You'll be a blob of nothing that the universe will shun. So have a little money, Steve, and have a little fun. Money is the antidote to poverty and hunger. If everyone had money, then we all could hang on longer. The longer we all last, why then, the happier we'll be. So have a little money, Steve, and have some more for me. There is no loneliness like the present, said the Hudson bookstore in the airport. No, nor any salvation like the past, cried the Panda Express. The sun has been deleted and only the strongest flavors prevail in this madhouse, murmured the Starbucks. Yes, but if you point that out, we will uproot you, snarled the McDonald's. I knew the girl of many colors had been transformed and I did not know how to locate her. It rained from a different fixture every day. You can call a plumber, but they cannot restore sound to the picture, nor translate the subtitles into a language that you actually speak. As I stalked in from security, I saw that everything was of equal insignificance. Certain things from the world outside were missing here. There were no birds or homeless people, and there was not a breath of wind. Gravity was stronger than ever. The other inhabitants I saw were pacing the floors, heads cast down as they studied their trolleys. A lot of passengers, more than I would have suspected, were carrying inflatable cacti. The spines faced outward, so in theory no cactus could puncture itself, but this made them perilous to cart around. Some cactus holders wore asbestos gardening gloves, a hazard in themselves, but this only added to the claustrophobia of baggage. 
time. As it was impossible to take these spiky balloons through security, they were all purchased here in the departure lounge for gates 45 to 61. People bought them largely because they were for sale. Few can have enjoyed carrying them around or lugging them to the gate, only to have to leave them to be loaded into the hold by ground staff. Even in first class, there was no room for inflatable cacti on board the aircraft. I went to a water fountain to get some peace and drank it down my air-conditioned throat. Peace was free if you knew where to look, but it was temporary. The leaf was free too, actively encouraged even, though knowledge was frowned upon by the airport management. I knew the girl of many colors was here, but I had no idea what form she would take. What did I know? Only that as the night wore on, I would sink into a mine of rage and paranoia where no birds sang. Already the silhouettes of tail fins loomed against the sunset as the runways clogged with metal beasts shuffling towards being airborne. The night was my problem because my ghosts were angry on account of their wartime experiences. It was, and still is, my job to pacify them. They're inexpensive, at least in money, if not in time. Only a few of the airline pilots had been drinking, and very few of them were actually drunk. My stepfather once told me that Uzbek pilots had the worst reputation, although he was a historian and was often inclined to exaggerate. You can't always trust facts, can you? Anyway, I was staring at the water fountains, wondering if either of them would be the right height for a goat to drink from, which in turn would depend on the height of the goat, when a pilot said to me, I love your accent. Which part of Kentucky are you from? Before I could reply, he twirled his moustache at either end and told me about meeting two members of Led Zeppelin, neither of whom I knew, in a bar in San Rafael when he was younger than them, and how friendly they had been. I mentioned several names, but they weren't the Led Zeppelin members I knew of. To be a member, you have to belong to something, I was thinking. Then the pilot wasn't there anymore. Near to me, two flight attendants with their overcoats and snappy compact luggage trolleys were pointing up at the eaves of the building. I glimpsed above me a green, rustling forest of balloons, some of which were cacti, and some of which had human form. They bumped gently against the ceiling, reminding me of the gills of a mushroom or of the space needle. One of these floating creatures was the pilot who had but lately been discussing Led Zeppelin with me. I recognized his mustache, moss green though it now was, like the rest of him. A swaying tide of verdant beings hung like grass above gates 45 to 61. My phone pinged. Up there, was the message delivered. It was from her, it had to be. Nobody else knew this number. In a second, I too was transported to the ceiling and suspended lighter than air. I didn't feel especially light, but it did feel peaceful up there, more peaceful than by the water fountain. It was the best I had felt all day. As I looked down, I could see a goat carefully edge its way out of Starbucks and pad towards the fountain expectantly. Then I saw it was on a leash, and the leash was in both the hands of a tall, black-clad roadie. Tubby took human form 
and strolled down to the river to meet Madeline Kozlovsky. She had left her offices on 38th Street and gone for lunch with a sandwich. The sandwich was half eaten by the time she ran across Tubby. Hey, check out those bready sides, he said. She didn't recognize him at first. She assumed that he was just some irritating stranger leering at her foodstuffs. But no, not a bit of it. Turned out to be Tubby. Tubby and Ms. Kozlovsky had last met in her office the previous March. No conventional transactions had happened. That's absolutely true. Nonetheless, an accord was set up between them, a bond of sorts. Now, Tubby had come to collect. Reality was changing places with a dream. All too soon. He would become her. And she... Who would she be? Well, who's anybody? When the story really gets going.
The truth is what remains in the center of your head after all other thoughts have flown, like the last guests at a party who obstinately refuse to leave. Even as you're carrying out the half-drunk glasses, draining the random untouched cocktail, and adding your teeth marks to the cheese, the truth about Christmas is buttonholing you morosely over a Virgin Mary that it's taken all evening not to finish. The truth speaks. Christmas, let's face it, is a miserable occasion, an oasis of artificial light in a dark wasteland. But there's one consolation. What's that? You aren't with your family. None of them are here. I love my family, as individuals. Nobody loves their family, except crazy people whom the family themselves abhor. Huh. Would you like some vodka in that? We have seven bottles left. Everybody drank the rosé. I'm good, thanks. It doesn't pay to enjoy yourself at this time of year. You don't seem in any danger of that. Can I offer you a cigar? You are obviously unaware that it's now illegal to smoke anywhere except in Cuba, where, by all accounts, the Wi-Fi is dismal. Well now, Truth, wouldn't even you admit the joy of colored lights twinkling over medieval choirs and the steady exhalation of the family cat? Let me return to your concept of the family as individuals. That they may be in life, but at Christmas they become fused into one saturated mass of self-loathing. Try scraping them off you. It's worse than burnt toffee. Hey, Truth. I'll call you a cab. It's only a week now till New Year's Eve. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash.
here, baby. She a waffle head.